Hey, welcome back here to the Central PA Pour. This is a, another episode, and we are getting loggered up today. So I am Brett. I'm Ben. I'm Kevin. And I'm Dave. And we have a special guest. We've been talking about having a guest on here, and we have our first guest. This is Tim March from Bailey's Home Brew Supplies and Stony Run. So, Tim, let's, let's, uh, let's hear what you have to say. Introduce yourselves to everybody. All right. Brett. Hey, thanks, guys. I appreciate you having me in. Uh, it's, it's an honor to be the first guest of your Central first one, PA buddy. Tour, so <laughs> so uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. We're glad to have you. So tell us a little bit about Stony Run and, and Bailey's. How'd you get into that? Where's where it's located at? How can the people find you? Okay. Well, first of all, we're located at 3605 East Market Street. It's out close to uh, Maple Donuts, First Post, in that, that area, out close to York Volkswagen. Pretty easy to find. We're right along Market Street. So yeah cool the red look for the red roof red roof <laughs> and and not only can you go out there and get great beer and and some very good food but if you're into making your own beer tim and his staff will get you all set up as well so yeah that's where i met him great yes. advice and great food <laughs> yep. appetizers to die for yep so tim welcome we're glad you're here we're gonna have some fun here today this is all about just shooting the shit drinking some beer and having some fun awesome Ben, tell everybody where they can find us because sometimes uh, they, they don't find us too well. <laughs> you can find us at Central PA Poor on all the social media and YouTube in the description to this episode and all of our social media bios. You can find our link tree, which will take you to all of your listening or watching platforms as well as the rest of our social media pages. Yeah. All right. Thank you. That tree still has the swing, right? It does. It we does. didn't get the slide on it yet. <laughs> no, no slide. <laughs> so, so with the being, uh, with being the year of the logger, we just wanted to focus <laughs> this great beer types. You know, there are many different styles in this category, like different pilsners, Hills Lager, uh, Dortmunder, uh, Vienna, um, Marzen styles of Bach, American Dark Amber, and Light. So, so please just. You know, there's so many to choose from. Just, you know, pick. There's a lot of types. Tim, yeah. you can probably vouch for that. I mean, there's a lot of different lager styles out there. There's quite a few, yes. Yeah. Lights, darks. Yeah, so Depends yes. on what you're after. Um, I think a Pilsner could be included in that as well yes, or not? Yes, yes. It's definitely a Pilsner definitely. is a lager. Mm -hmm. I think that's what I brought today is a Czech Pilsner. Czech Pilsner. That's nice. going to be good. So uh, speaking that, we are being lagered up here. Why don't we get into being lagered up? <laughs> And let's get into our uh, our first beer. So our first beer is coming to us from Molly Pitcher Brewing in Carlisle. It's Molly's Lighter Lager. This one's clocking in at a 5% ABV with 10 IBU. And under the brewer's notes, we have a micro light lager brewed with spalt hops. This lager drinks like sunshine in summertime. On untapped... It has 333 check-ins with an average of 3.61. So, cheers, boys. Let's cheers. kick it off. So, just a reminder, one. we've been cheers. talking about our coloring that we talked about, yeah. and that I've always forgotten the charts, but we have our little SRM charts here today so we can rate the SRM scale of it. So, I'm about a four or five on that. Really? In the, in the coloring. I'd say a little bit lower, but... Yeah, I'm saying. You know what? I look at a number two there. Yeah, I was thinking yeah, I was number two. Number two. Maybe I was against yeah. that, but you, you know what? The, you got the light behind you. It's not bad. This is not bad at all. It's I, it's, I, it's, it's clean and crisp. I see what they mean with sunshine and summertime. Definitely. A, this is definitely a light drinking beer. It's yeah. it's definitely crisp. It has a little bit of good flavor to it. it has a nice dry finish. It yep, does. dry finish. You know the, the 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 smell versus the taste is too different. Yeah. I, I almost smelled the hops at first, but it's not. Definitely not. So it does have a couple of IBUs, so it's a little little lower scale on the IBUs. A little that gives it a little bit of slight bitterness with the IBU and the hops they may have used. Mm -hmm. But it's nice. It's, it's a it's a light drinking beer. If you're looking yeah. for a good refreshing um, during the hot day, I think this would be a pretty good beer. Almost has a little bit of a lemony. Yes, it does. A little lemon zest to it. Yeah. 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 And is that would that be something they added, or would that be coming from the hop they may have used? It's. It depends on the, uh, if they used like a lemon drop hop, you know, it's going to give you a little lemon flavor, but it, uh, I don't know if they zested it or not. It does look like it has a slight 
haze to it, so they may have added something. Yeah. yeah. So we we have a professional here that's going to show us <laughs> amateurs <laughs> how to actually to score a beer. So yeah. Um, I like it. I'm going to say it's like a three five on my scale. Yeah. I'm thinking like a three point five. I went to a seven five. Three seven. Points. Three point seven. Three point seven five. I think yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, I'm not much for light <clears throat> beers, but that's actually not a bad drinking beer. I'd I'd take that over a Miller Light or even a, uh, anything over a Coors Light. <laughs> <laughs> hey Dave, did you see yeah. the did you see the goat retired last week? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We good, told you we were going to put that bear. Good for him, you know. Good, good for him. Dave's hot spot. Yeah. Yeah, that's, well, that's, Dave's, that's Dave's honey bun. Oh, okay. He yeah. loves Tom Brady. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, I have a picture of him somewhere. I think it's on one of my tires. Now, anyway. Uh, he, no, it's nothing. He's okay. I'm all right. I'm okay, I'm okay with him, you know. I, you know. I have nothing against Tom Brady. You know, he is a very good quarterback. He's done a lot. He's, he's won quite a few awards. But. You know, <laughs> yeah. Is he as good as Ben Roethlisberger? But. Oh, gosh. <laughs> wow. Just uh, go right for it, you know. <laughs> I, I tell you, here's, here's my problem is, is the fact that everybody is calling him the GOAT. And the GOAT, G-O-A-T, greatest of all time. And I just, I just so disagree. What, what, if we do, what if we do this? If we say GOAT with two Ts, greatest of all this time. This time? <laughs> How's that? Would that work for you? I think, oh, that the, I think that there's, there's you know, through the, through the history of the NFL, all the way back to, you know, wherever it goes, it's just that there are guys who were the greatest at that time. And, and we, we had can, this discussion And last you night. cannot compare mm -hmm. that's, um, that's someone who is, yep. uh, uh, that is very good today with someone who was very good in the 90s and who was very good in the 70s and et cetera and et cetera. And that's what, that's what I feel. I just feel that, yes, he is a very good quarterback, and I just think that he is a very good quarterback for this time in this era, but I just don't think that he's forever. And <laughs> I saw something crazy. Um, he's been playing for 22 years, I think, and yeah. he, his career earnings is a fraction of his wife's. <laughs> Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? She's. I didn't even. I didn't even mom. know that. I didn't even know that. <laughs> wow. Uh, so uh, speaking of that, we we've had some that, discussions in a couple episodes ago. We did put out a trivia question. We didn't get any answers back on it, did we? Zero. So yeah, we got some. We got some game let, planning to do. Let's see if our guest can answer it. We the the first trivia question we put out, Tim, was there uh, we go. Yeah. Who was the first actor to ever play James Bond? The first actor to ever play James Bond. I know it wasn't Sean Connery. Very good so far. Uh, yeah, but I I don't know. I'm old. I forget. <laughs> so Dave, so Dave, let's let's fill in the answer since nobody actually guessed at it or even got it right. What, what was what's the correct answer? The the correct answer is a fellow by the name of Barry Nelson. Barry Nelson. Barry Nelson played James Bond. In 1954, I believe it was, he played at uh, Casino Royale, and um, uh, Le Chiff was played by, um, oh, I can't remember his name now. You know, Dave, yeah, come on yeah, now. Yeah, that, that guy, <laughs> that guy. But, you, uh, you know, the, the, the funny thing about it is, is that Barry Nelson actually, uh, when he died, he, he died in Pennsylvania, and he's buried in Pennsylvania. He, he He's buried here, although he lived in he lived in Phil or not in Philadelphia. He lived out in so he's double oh seven down under. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't go that far, but anyway, double oh six feet. But double uh, six feet. feet. Yeah, uh, I liked it. <laughs> but the answer we were looking for was was Barry was Nelson. Barry Nelson, and um, I had posed this question to a lot of people, and everybody is quick to say, "Well, that was Sean Connery." And, it, and when you do a search, Sean Connery is the first couple. Sean that Connery pop comes up. up. Right. You have to do a deep search. You actually yeah. have to go into the history. Because he's the first. It was the first movie yeah. actor. Yeah, he was the first. Because the first. You, we were talking about that. It was a series or something or that, that they it, did that. It was. It was. A, it was not a series of Bond. It was a series, a television series, a mystery series, and uh, that was the first uh, Bond uh, book that was was put on that particular series and uh, he had played it and uh, he in fact the funny thing about it is is 
um, he had never heard of <laughs> James Bond until they presented it to him. You know, and he, <laughs> says, he says, "Who's this guy?" So, so we're we're going to try this again um, to still give out a gift certificate. Do you have another question there, Dave? We can pose to him. Maybe somebody might answer this one. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I don't. You no, don't. actually, I do. I, 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 you I, had a couple last night we were talking yeah. about over a few beers, of course. Uh, yeah. Well, the one the one I'm thinking about is is because it's kind of related to the Olympics, and we're, we're, we're kind of uh, right in the midst of it. In the midst of it, but. Um, this is an Olympic question, and uh, actually, the last one was an Olympic question. Yeah, let's yeah, stick with the Olympic theme, even though this is another, being another recorded Olympic, now, but right. the Olympics will still be going still on. Still be going in. Um, the United States Olympic team has never won any medal of any color in this one event. All and right. Think of the summer or winter, the United States is missing a medal winner in only one event. One event. One event. So Dave's question is, the United States has never won a medal of any color in one Olympic event, summer or winter. Right. That is Dave's trivia question. So if you know it, give us a reply. Where, Ben? At, at Central PA Poor on all social media. Yep, and then look, you can email us at centralpapoor at gmail.com. So, again... The U.S. has never won an Olympic medal in, of any color in one Olympic event, summer or winter. Correct. Get us your answer, and we'll get you a $10 gift card. So, Tim, let's, uh, let's find out about you as far as I know you and I have. We kind of met when I first started coming out there. It was, Bob was the owner at that time, right? Yes. I'm so sorry. I, I, I ran out to Stony Run mainly for that Belgian quad. Mm-hmm. It is superior. And went into the home beer supply. He, he actually gave me a sample of it. It was just to die for. I couldn't wait till you guys open back up to come back out and try and get it. But he talked to me a little bit about home brewing. And I'm like, I, I, I don't have no, I, no clue. I don't have the time. So you've kind of taken over that operation now? Yes. Uh, Bob more or less retired. He, he was looking to, to sell Bailey's home brew. So him and I were partners on Stony Run. And he was, you know, at, at that age where he's looking to slow down a little bit. He wanted to get back into some construction. So uh, we got a, another partner to buy him out on Stony Run. And I, I bought his shares of uh, Bailey's Homebrew. So. Yep, so that's, that's kind of where I met you. I've, I went out there a couple times, and you were more graciously to help me try and get this figured out. And mm-hmm. um We've we've been out there several times to eat and have a few beers, and um, you guys are doing some renovations. Yes, yeah, we're we're actually expanding Stony Run. We're picking up twenty four seats. Oh, nice! Uh, so on the weekends, a lot of times we fill up really quick, and you know we don't take reservations. So uh, first come, first yeah, serve. First come, first serve, and people tend to linger, and they don't, you know, they're not in any hurry to to leave so it, right it, it gets well, full and then people, it's a people good leave. atmosphere to hang out at yes exactly that's um, what we tried to do is, is have a nice i i kind of like the the handmade taster oh my god yes the, mm-hmm. the cast iron tasters are handmade it, it, that bring the taster glasses out it's pretty cool it was a local blacksmith that made those fingers. local blacksmith nice. yeah. so how long have you been doing this uh i started home brewing it's probably been 15 years, so somewhere. doing what we're doing, like kits, is yes. that where? Yes, yeah, we started off with a, a turkey fryer and a, a five-gallon <laughs> pot. Of kits and, yeah, we just we just uh, took it from there. Okay. I, I uh, a good friend of mine, Bob Sterner, who's now my neighbor. Uh, you know, that's he has a homebrew setup in his garage, so that's how we got started. I call him Mr. Gadget. He calls me chef, so it was chef and gadget. <laughs> okay, that's he, pretty cool. Yeah, he's, I, I would come up with all the recipes, and then he would build the equipment. And he has, you know, mechanical background, so you know, that's he, pretty cool. Yeah, chef yeah. and gadget. That would be a pretty cool beer name. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, that's a good idea. We'll have to work that in. So, <laughs> <laughs> chef and gadget. Even if you take your st- the Stony Run Brew House and say, "Hey, this is the chef and gadget pale ale," mm-hmm. uh, that'd be pretty cool. That is cool. Yeah. Yeah, so. we've had a lot of fun with it, you know, and uh, friends would stop in. We'd be making beer. We'd have beer ready. You know, uh, we had keezers. And, and 
How big's your operation as far as uh, I don't think you're doing distribution at all right now? We do some. We have a few spots where we, okay. where we uh, sell kegs to, and then we have actually have people that come in and and uh, buy kegs for their for their home, home bar home consumption. Okay, yeah. oh, so wow. we do that. Right now, we only sell growlers to go. Okay, uh, we're looking at uh, doing some canning. Uh, we want to. We don't have space to do it there, so uh, sign of the horse up in Hanover has a canning operation. They're looking to help us out with that. So. Cool. That'd be good. So we'll probably yeah, hopefully have some four packs of our biggest sellers coming up here in yeah a month or two. That's good. So one of our other episodes we talked about the the fodders, 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 fooders, 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 and we we brought that into an episode because one of the beers that we tried was from their fooder series. Um, it's just like a large wooden vessel, right? Yeah. So you're not into any of that yet. Oh, absolutely not. No, we don't. We don't have the space for that. <laughs> we, so we're, we're a true nano brewery. It's okay. only a three barrel system. So. Three barrels. I was just getting yes. ready to ask how big is the system hole you know yeah. that you can put out. So we get six half kegs. Okay. Or whatever variation we get of six doles and halves from that system, but it's uh, 93 gallons. 93 gallons. Mm, it's yeah. still a lot of beer. It's a lot of beer. Yeah. It's a lot of beer. <clears throat> how often do you go? Can go through a batch? It depends, you know. Uh, like the, the you uh, talked about the the quad. Now that we only sell that in a ten ounce pour, mm-hmm. so you know. But we still have ninety three gallons of that. So the it, ten ounce pour is enough. Pour, yeah, it, <laughs> yeah. Definitely enough. You know, right now I think the uh, ABV of, of our latest batch is somewhere around thirteen, low thirteen. Oh, yeah. so. Now we're talking. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> definitely a sipper. It is. And, it's and def- Bob, Bob used to say, uh, one and done and four on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, so that's I, cool. That's, that is cool. Um, do you barrel age that once in a while, or is it? We, again, we don't really have the space to barrel age. Uh, I say we put, the, you put the, beer, the, uh, the barrel in the beer instead of the beer in the barrel. Right, okay. Uh, so, we, yeah, we soak oak chips oh. and... You know, we, we put things we, in the secondary. We did that with one of our batches yeah. we, out yeah, of we our did. kit. Yeah, I so. would. I mean, it would be nice to barrel each one, you know, some of it at some point because uh, not too long ago we had a gentleman come back in and it was from our 2019 batch and he found a, a 32 ounce growler that he forgot about in the back <laughs> of the refrigerator oh. and he brought that in and we sampled it. It was back in December of, the, of uh, 21. So it's two years sitting in his fridge. Two years sitting in his fridge, uh, you know, and it was incredible how much that changed. And yeah. it was, it, what was really incredible about it was in a, sitting in a growler, a glass growler. Right. And it still had a little bit of carbonation to it. Still a little. And it, just the flavor profile just totally changed. Did it change it for the better? Definitely changed it for the better. Because it, you know, when it's young, it, the oak and the bourbon tends to, influence the flavor uh-huh. so with this that kind of went more in the background and then you know the the dark fruit the raisin the, the you know plum that you know those that tended to come out a little bit more too so yeah that's cool it was w- much more balanced much more balanced much so more balanced, yeah. you guys got anything for tim <laughs> i was just looking down here do you have a difference between let's see which which beer is your favorite to drink, and what is your favorite to make? Or are they along the same lines there? Uh, well, definitely my favorite beer to drink is the Russian Imperial Stout. Okay. Oh, Actually, I knew I like this guy. <laughs> barrel aged Russian Imperial Stout, without a doubt. I mean, okay. I I could probably drink that all year round. I do tend to just this time of year, you know, they go down a little bit better, gotcha. cold weather and whatnot. But yeah. but uh, yeah, Russian Imperial Stout's my my favorite. Gotcha. I like the the hazy IPAs too. But they take that, a close close go. second, but now that's that's right up Ben's yeah, alley. Yeah, yeah, that's right up my alley. He's a, he's into the IPAs. Yes, he is. Dave loves IPAs too, so is Kevin. Yeah, no, I don't. <laughs> oh, man. Tim, Tim, when we started, <laughs> haven't gotten you there. No, yet. <laughs> no. Well, I tell you, it. you know, there we have been drinking IPAs, and I'm I'm not as adverse to them now as I was years ago. I think I mentioned this before. I think that a lot of times. Someone would bring me an IPA, and, and he says, here, try this, you know, and I'd drink it, and I says, I don't like it. And he says, yeah, well, these are great, you know, they were only a $1.98 a six-pack. And I said, you know, <laughs> so I think, I think if you get, you know, we, 
we've been drinking some good IPAs, and that's the and, and, and that, yeah. that makes mm-hmm. a big difference. So, but uh, I am, you know, I'm not ready to go lockstep down for, to, uh, to, you know, to, to, for the IPAs over a, a good stout. I'm, I, I like good good stout. I like yeah. stouts, yeah. I, porters. I like porters and, and lagers. Yep. So I'm just more into that realm. So, yeah, the only question I have for you is, is uh, what do you think of Tom Brady? No, I'm sorry. We- <laughs> <laughs> no, he's pretty cute. You know, move on. <laughs> his, his wife thinks, his wife, you said, you said that uh, she, makes, she makes more than he does, huh? huh? Oh, I think her net worth is approaching a billion a, a million? Good grief. I, I don't have my phone on me, but... It, Holy cow. It's it's up there. Wow. wow. That's incredible. Wow. Petty cash. She is a model, right? She's a model. I, yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Mm. i have to change my profession here. Maybe I should... Uh, <laughs> never, <laughs> too never too late. late. Never too yeah. late. <laughs> Good. Oh, yeah. So, you want to try number two? Or yeah. Or a little bit? No, let's get it. Let's get. Let's do another one. I'm getting a little thirsty. Yeah. I mean, I'm staring at all five of these and... Or, you st- you're staring at them all. You, there's some. He's not even done with one yet. Yeah, I, I'm a I'm a beer connoisseur. I, <laughs> I think. Classy, I think. But that was that was the stuff. finish off number one. Number two is a um, from Collusion. Collusion Tap Works in York. <clears throat> Should be this one. This is a, out of order. This is a. I think I screwed that up. Keep going. No, no, I screwed Mc, it up. Mc, McShiny. So is this? No, it's, is it's, it's going to be the dark one? one. I messed it okay. up, Dave. Oh, okay. So slide this one back to number three. I'm yep. only reading the notes, people. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> we put we put the beers in the wrong order. That's my bad. Okay. So this so, is the darker number three. Yep. It's the this one, you your know, go, I looked at this. There goes your goat status. Yep. There goes <laughs> there goes my goat status. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We flushed that down there for you. Okay. This this is. Yeah. Is that's the one? Yeah, this is one. this is here. This is the McShiny, the Amber Bach, and it is from Collusion. Mm-hmm. Correct, and uh, it has a six point six percent ABV and uh, thirty four IBU. And uh, I'll read you the brewer's notes here real quick. Uh, the Amber Bock brewed oh, yeah. with Pilsner, Mu- Munich, Vienna, and a dash of chocolate wheat. Hmm. Interesting. I was wondering how that. That's would taste. that's a different mixture. That's there. a different mixture. Yes, it is. Chocolate wheat. Chocolate wheat. Yeah. Sturdily hopped with uh, sterling and. Tettenager, fermented cool with our house lager yeast and lagered for six weeks. Hmm. So we had mentioned okay. about lagering. It takes a lot longer to lager a beer, correct? Yes. yes. Yeah, the, the one I have here today was two months. Two months. Through lagering, yeah. Wow. What's, what's like, like, let's just say yingling, when they put it down there in their cool storage, what do they normally let that sit at? Three hours. Uh, Temperature-wise, I'm not. A, no, I'm just sure. saying. Do they do they let it six six weeks, eight weeks, six months? I would say it's probably closer it's like to six good. weeks. Okay, so uh, six to eight weeks is like a typical lagering process. Yeah. Okay. I know what you and I have had that discussion. Me trying to lager a beer, I just don't have the facility or mm-hmm. way to control it. And then, yeah, you definitely have to control the the temperatures. Cause, yeah. yeah. This isn't bad. I went in there to, to get this, and they had I two. Like they actually had two loggers. One was a lighter one, and he asked. I asked the bartender, and he said, "Well, talk to her. It was it must have been a regular?" And she said, "Oh, definitely the McShiny." So, or McShiny, McShiny. I, I'm going to say McShiny. I think it's McShiny, but uh, that's that's very good. It is pretty good. I would give it a. Uh, I'm going to give that a four and a half. Really? Yeah. This is right up your alley. I like this. This is the kind of beer I like. And I had mentioned this uh, last night. I said I I I do like uh, mm-hmm. Amber Bach, so it's got a it's definitely whatever. got a, a really good mouth feel. Mm-hmm. I kind of taste a little bit of maybe what they're talking about that the chocolate. Yeah, that's what I'm getting. A right little off bit the of bat. yeah, a little bit of that chocolate right on the palate right at the beginning. Mm-hmm. It's got a nice little dry finish as well. It's yeah, it's good. It I, finishes really good. You get yeah. that nice upfront chocolate wheat and then it you know, just yeah. kind of goes through the breadiness the maltiness now being out of york you know with collusion and you um liquid heroes in york mud hook do you guys ever get into doing collab work because we've talked we brought that up in one of our episodes that a yeah, bunch of people do collaborations with different stuff i didn't know if you've ever done any collaborations 
I have not done any collaborations with any of the guys in York. Okay. Uh, and I think that's because everybody we're, we're close together. I think when you do a collaboration, you want to try to get, get somebody, bring somebody in from somewhere else so it can you know introduce you in their area and them in, into your area. Right. So, gotcha. I know uh, those breweries you just mentioned, they did, uh, it's called York City Six mm -hmm. at one time. They were doing collaborations. Okay. And they kind of met every so often. I don't know where that is anymore. They, I don't. I think it kind of fell through. I don't know if they did anything. Do you lately. know the brewers? I didn't know if there was like a little club or if there was like a brewer association you guys all go to. I know. I know the brewers. Uh, probably Jared from uh, Collusion. <laughs> you know, as I see him all the time. Okay. Uh, yeah, and some of the other guys, you know, from the other ones. I mean, I know them, but it's not like. You know, we're talking all the right. Time. You're not you're not buddies and hanging out on a podcast <laughs> with them, right? <laughs> it's the nice thing about it. That's the one the beautiful thing about you know being in this business is you know you, you need something from someone that they'll help you out. Grain, hops, whatever. Yeah. You know, it seems like everybody's pulling for each other. Yeah, it's that's not, that's cool. It's not a cut through it. That's, thing, you know? that's, that's pretty cool. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think we've kind of mentioned that about this whole craft beer explosion at this this has just been it's astronomical of what the small independents have come up with mm -hmm. and they're they're constantly coming up with new breweries popping up here and there i mean we brought up the last episode i think there's at least three in the central pa area that are coming going to be new this year and i think like you and just more said, on the horizon you yeah know, i'm uh affiliated with york area home brewers they meet at, at Stony Run uh, the last Monday of every month, and uh, there's a couple of guys in in the York area homebrewers that are getting ready to launch their own. Launch something. Well, yeah. we, we brought up we're going to buy this building down here, and, yeah. and, and Essex <laughs> Home Brewing eventually is going to become Essex Brewing. <laughs> is that the, the building in Wagelstown? The, yeah, yeah. The, 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 old the old grocery store. The old grocery store. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The one, yeah. the one with the 12 bay tractor trailer. Yeah. On, you know. Well, uh, that could be the brewery. We've talked yeah. about <laughs> that. Distribution, man. Yeah that's, <laughs> yeah, that's what you need. Distribution. So, yeah, I like that. I think I'm going to at least go a 425 on that beer. That's where I'm at. Yeah. That's a really pretty good beer. Okay, I'm gonna stick with my four, four and a half. Wow. I like this. Well, you know, uh, when it comes to four and a half, for me, you know, that's pretty good. If I do, if I say it's a four and a half, it's something that I'd pop the top of it off of it probably every night if I wanted to. Now I'm not, a, you know, that that's not what I do. But I mean, like, if I was going to pick a beer out of the refrigerator, yeah, I'd pick this. Up well, quick. four and a half, we've rated that. Um, that's pretty much where we rated are some of our favorites. Yeah. Some of our yeah. favorites. Some yep. of our favorites. That's, it's got a lot of complexity. Yeah, it's it is. Just, the other ones, you know, you kind of have your, your breadiness and yep. your little yeah. bit of yeast. The hops come through. That's, this, that's this definitely a, complex. That, that chocolate wheat. And know, it, that, is that brought a whole different... Is uh, that something different? Is that something like they make the wheat it, with a little bit of chocolate, or is that actually the what the the grain? I think it's uh, it's how it's roasted. Okay, roasted. You know, or how, yeah, when it's uh, malted, and that kind of helps smooth it out a little bit too. Right. When you when right. you roast that malt, so yeah. yeah. So speaking of hops, I think we Ben, you were mentioning you wanted to be you were interested in different styles of hops and stuff. That yeah, you we're looking at. Yeah, it's uh, it really just. It, it caught my attention because you're drinking all these different beers and they all list the hops and malts and, and so on. And sometimes you just can't put a flavor to the, the hop, basically. You know, you just drink something you're not exactly sure. It tastes good, but you're not exactly sure where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. So we have a little description here. Hops are the green cone-shaped flowers of the humulus iupulus plant. They're climbing perennial with a distinct jackpot for craft brewers. Hidden inside each cone are tiny yellow pods or glands called lupulin, lupulin the source of bitterness, aroma, and flavor in the beer. And I believe this came from episode number one, Brett? Episode right? number one, we were trying to figure out where Liquid Hero came with loop yelling. And yes. this is probably where they got that because it was an IPA. Yeah, yeah. And they, they took the, the off the lupulin. Mm -hmm. And so, Dad and I actually did some field work. <laughs> For his birthday, I took him out for a few uh, a few beers at different spots around downtown there. And we asked the bartender, and he said the, the E was silent, I believe. Yes. Is that right, Dad? So Lu Lupulin? Lupulin. Lupulin. I, we got a professional sitting right to your yeah. left. Yeah. To your right. Right. He can tell us. I, I say it's Lupulin. 
Lupulin. Lupulin is what I say. Tomato, tomato, tomato potato, tomato. potato. Who cares? <laughs> it's the yellow stuff inside the cone. Yeah, it's it's what you're after. You your flavor. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and every hop, right, brings a different characteristic. Yeah, there are so many different varietals of, of hop and, you know, what it brings, bitterness, aroma, flavor, you know, and, and when you put it in the boil, you know, the longer it's in the boil, the more the, uh, the uh, alpha acids yep. change and... You know, the essential oils, it basically boils off and it, it becomes more bitter. The later you put it in the boil, then it's more aromatic, more flavor. That's where that IPAs will really get that hoppy, piney, citrusy aromas if it's dry hop late. Well, and again, it's, it depends on the varietal of the hop. Okay. So, you know, if, if you're, yeah, typically a, a, like a West Coast IPA, which is tends to be a little bit more Kevin's favorite bitter side the piney the you know that dank uh resiny flavor you know that you have a lot of early hops you know in the boil like 60 minutes and then you know also kind of continuously through the because that's I mean that's what um so dogfish head has a 60 a 90 and a 120 oh, yeah yeah and I never understood it till I went down through their plant what that meant it was how long they did the boil how, mm -hmm. how long yes. they did the boil and we had a 120 at one of our beer nights. Yeah, yeah, 120. Like Brad brought it over. Brad brought yeah. it over. My son brought and it. And I never understood why my stepson enjoyed this beer so much. Holy shit, was it smooth. Mm -hmm. At what, 18.2%? Yeah. That's a sipping beer. That's a sipping beer. Oh, yeah. Slow sipping beer. But it, that, had, that it had none of the IPA characteristics like the, that, that, like you were saying, dank or hoppy or piney. It was just smooth. And I don't know, I guess it's because of the boil just smoothed it out some. Is that how that works? Uh, yeah, I, that could be. Yeah, just so. you know, kind of uh, mellowed it out through. Yeah, yeah so that's 120 20 minute boil. That's a long time. That's yeah. a long time. That's yeah. a two hour boil. I tell you what, it was good though. It was good. Yeah. I it still got good. one in the fridge. There you go. We'll be over after this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's another thing too. The longer you boil it, the, the more water content evaporates too, and you know it becomes the work becomes more condensed. Right. Right. Hmm. So before we get into a, a third tasting, I'm going to throw one in at you. We a couple episodes ago we talked about because my wife had COVID, I did a home brew. It was a Kolsch kit, came from Bailey's. I think I screwed it up though. <laughs> I talked to Tim. I was like, I got a band because I have a hard time in the basement trying to control to keep it at what 65, 60 to yes. between 65 and 7, 68, 70. It's it would always awesome fluctuate, so I got this. outside that range is I got this band to help maintain that, and I, I did the boil. You know, I cooked, did the kit without you guys because the wife had COVID. We yeah, we talked that's about why, that's why it got screwed up. Got screwed we up. I didn't there. have you guys there. We weren't there. But we talked about what to name it. Well, you know, I I wanted to go Omicron twenty two because it was the the variation of COVID yeah. right now. <laughs> but no, nah, nobody liked that. So it's Ragtop Raspberry. But I think I ruined it, but I asked you, Tim, about it, and you said if it doesn't taste bad or have a funk smell. So I went to I went to secondary, and I put a raspberry to it. So that's going to be this one here. Our middle one. The middle yeah. one. Yeah. You don't one? have one. What happened to yours, Ben? I don't have a clue. Well, we'll have to get you one. I've already had it. Okay. So this is my ras ragtop raspberry Kolsch. Is this it? Uh, I think so. Does, I have does it smell like raspberries? That'd be your middle one. That'll be the de definite one. Oh, yeah, that's it. That's it right there. It smells good. It smells so, good. Do you smell raspberry? Oh, raspberry. yeah. Yeah. That's it. I, that's did, it. I, think I it's used that good. whole extract in it. So this is our, our special tasting tonight. So I'm we're gonna giving wait. our ragtop raspberry a round. Well, wow. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait for you guys, and I'll see what happens to you guys first before I try. Tim, Tim, I'm going to rate this. I got to the color. Just teasing. It's definitely wow. not a Kolsch color. Right. It's definitely dark. Definitely dark. And it's, it's you're towards not quite that, sure where that came from? I don't know where that came from. I don't know if it was the raspberry that gave it, but it, it or if I when I had that band on it that it got too hot. I, I don't know. Definitely a strong 0. 0.0025 rating. It's <laughs> so I went ahead and I I went ahead and I bottled it because it didn't it wasn't skunked and I'm like, eh, it's drinkable. And it's drinkable. Up. That's drinkable for sure. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's, it's not nice. hateful, but it's not great it's either. Good. It's not a four point five, but I mean, it's... I gave it. I'll tell you what. I gave myself a two. Really? That's where I rated myself. I give it more than a two. Yeah, I, I think so. Wow. 
Tim's going to give me an honest opinion. Though, I know that. Actually, I want to. I'd love to I, hear I do. a professional I wanna, opinion. I want to. I want to hear what Tim has to say about it. Well, <clears throat> Kolsch, you can take the name Kolsch. <laughs> it ain't a Kolsch anymore. Uh, it's not a Kolsch <laughs> anymore. Yeah, there's no Kolsch. That's a good. That's a good attributes answer. about it. Color, uh, flavor. Again, the raspberry kind of. It's overbearing. Dominates. I think yeah. the next time, if I ever do that again, I'm going to cut back on that extract, maybe half the bottle, right? To just give it a hint mm -hmm. instead of the whole four ounce. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Because, you know, you're, I'm not picking up any of the beer flavors. Once I get that raspberry, it's all it's, that's it's, all you're getting. Yeah, it's, it's not what, hateful, but it's not great either. What are the characteristics that we're looking for in a Kolsch? Because I do a not know. Clean, crisp. Like straw. Okay. Real light, well, cut light color. Quart almost, sign of like this. Very pale. Okay. Uh, and, you know, it's almost like a lager. It's actually an ale, but it's... It's going to have a dry finish. Like it's like going to have a crisp clean taste to it that's what a coach is supposed to be so is this color strictly from the, the I, I really don't know it may have been interesting okay you know nice i got an amber color though it's this, it, it is I could, I could say it's an amber bock it has, to be, <laughs> it has to be from the raspberry so it, i just like i'm gonna throw this in here because i have tim coming here and i was like he'll give me an honest opinion which i'm okay with because i know i screwed it up <laughs> I mean, it's not bad. It's not, not hateful. Mm. I drink it. I it's drink two. It it's only two weeks that. into bottle, mm -hmm. so I guess it'll see what happens after a little bit longer. Yeah, I mean, it's nice, nice carbonation. Yeah, better than the last one that got over carbonated. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> My golden stout that I did. And you, you have a bottle of that. Just yes. make sure you're over the sink when you <laughs> open it. It hasn't gotten any better because it's been sitting in my garage since you and I had talked. Okay. It has not gotten any better with the yeah. carbonation. I'm about ready to crack them all and just dump them. We, we've said that a couple of times. It happens. That happens. For yeah. Sure. We we stated that a couple of times today. The longer things sit, the better they are. And that first one, that caramel. Oh, oh the caramel. Oh, the, the, I totally did not like that forever. Really? And, and then it was like two, three months. No, it was longer than that. And then all of a sudden, you brought one over, and it's like, Wow, this is this is great. It, yeah. And I don't know what it was or just Tim said it's too sweet for him, but it was pretty good. He gave yeah, me his the, honest the opinion. Salt and caramel. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah, salt and caramel. That port. was one where, you know, that's all I got was the salt, the caramel and because I used the whole I just did everything. Thank you. Yeah. I I thought that too as well, but then when, it wasn't that long ago. We I tried that other one and it's like, wow, what it I don't know what you aged or whatever. It, it was very well, that, good. I, I think that it, the the flavorings will dissipate yeah. over time. So, I have I do have a question for you. Um, is there like an, um, an an age ceiling for beer? Like a lot of people say that you know you've had that you've had that beer for years, so it's no good. And um, I I just didn't know if there was like a formula that you that you go by and say oh you you, you can own you can you have to brew it by this time. And then you have to drink it by this time, and then after this time, it's it's gone. Okay. Uh, well, again, that depends on the style of beer. Okay. Like an IPA, uh, you know, they're all most of them are hop forward. Hops have a big part in the IPAs, and again, age degrades the hops. Okay. So the flavoring will dissipate and degrade over time. It'll it, instead of picking up the hop flavor, it'll you know if you let a hot uh, like a perpetual trogues perpetual or something age for a year or two you drink it it's going to be mostly malty you know the hops will be yeah. gone by that time you know yeah in that period of time so again to answer your question the the lower abvs don't age well the higher abvs you know like the uh, imperials anything mm -hmm. over eight percent Tends to age a little bit better than the lower ABVs. Okay, yeah, that's that's drink, good to drink know. Drink the lower ABVs right away, and right. You know, buy that's a couple extra of the, the higher ABVs and sit them in the cellar and see what they taste like in a year. Just 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 a little quick story why I, why I asked that was just because back years decades ago when we I I used to belong to a a, a judo team. And we would we went up we would go up to our sensei's house and and just hang out and he and I was the only one that actually wanted any beer and he says you want a beer and I said sure and he brought out this can of beer hams 
Who? <laughs> <laughs> But the bottom of the can <laughs> was, <laughs> it was, it straight. was pushed out. <laughs> and I said, how long have you had this? And he says, I don't know, maybe a couple of years. <laughs> and it's been sitting in his refrigerator. Yeah. And, and it was one of those things where, you know, you don't want to insult him, you know. But How old were you? <laughs> what? How old were you? How old was I? Yeah. I was, were, you, were you 70? No, there was no, there was no drinking age back then. I me. love this. You know, I said this was years ago, and you just, you just <laughs> plowed in with that, you know. But you know, as a teenager, you're going to drink if it's a beer, and somebody offers you a beer, you don't care how much it yeah. tastes like crap. Yeah, you're going to drink it, or how much it costs. Well, through. I was, yeah. I was. Let's put it this way: I was, I was freshly married. I was, but uh, it, it was one of those things where, I, I, you know, I had the, the warning was the bottom of the can was, <laughs> yeah, that was, was pushed out. That's a pretty telltale sign right there. And I just yeah. thought that maybe I shouldn't drink this. <laughs> and um, I figured that maybe two or three years is a long time to wait. And it was not a Imperial. I think it was a Bud. Yeah. A Bud Light. Yeah, that's, it was for a Bud. Yeah. Yeah. Those types of beers. Well, they, they just... <laughs> Look, to me, Bud, Bud is junk to start with. <laughs> I'm sorry. Just my personal well, opinion. Everybody's tasted different. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yes. I, I just had to put, I had to throw that out because they have an expert here. Yep. And I've, it's always bugged me. You know, is there an age on a beer? Like, if you buy a beer, do, do you have to drink it within a year, or do you have to? You know. And I also think it depends if you keep it. If you put it in the fridge and take it out, put it back in the fridge, you're going to skunk it more quickly. I heard that wasn't stuff. true. Yeah, that that's uh, kind of a misconception. I, is it? I okay. heard that wasn't yeah, true. It's it's yeah. more light. We'll give it that skunky. Yes. The light. Yeah. yeah. The light. Okay, that's why a lot of people are doing brown bottles. Not. That's why there, a lot of people are canning now. Canning you know, it helps keep the keeps the yeah, light out keeps of it. Light out oh. of it. Yep. So hey, I I know you just got back from a vacation. I did. Yeah. <laughs> Jamaica man. Oh. oh. Here Anybody go. here looking for the Rasta man? <laughs> <laughs> That's what we heard on the beach back yeah, and forth, man. guys. <laughs> you didn't happen to see the Jamaican bobsled team? Did, did you? not. No. Didn't it? No. So I, I, I heard I'm, a lot about it. Everybody was excited. They should be. They got they got four sleds in the yeah. in the Olympics yeah. this yeah, year. So a feat. we brought that up in, the, in one of our two episodes ago. Yeah. That yep. uh, the Jamaicans got four sleds this time instead of wow. just the one in Calgary. So. I think it's great. You know, the Olympics are going on, and even though we're recording this now with the Olympics, by the time this gets out, the Olympics will be over, and the U.S. should have the most medals, hopefully. Um, I love the Olympics. I love watching the Olympics. And I can remember here last night we were drinking beer, (laughs) of course. Imagine that. Imagine that. But I missed the opening ceremonies, but you guys said you looked at watching me. My wife said, did you watch? I'm like, no, I missed them. I was drinking beer. She goes, well, they were were really good. Of course, she had to send me a picture of that. The one guy that's been in the last couple summer and winter Olympics, he always comes in with his his country outfit on with no shirt. Oh, yeah. Uh, Yeah. uh, He's a McShiny. He's a (laughs) McShiny. He's a McShiny. Uh, but the, he's been in the last now four Olympics, yeah, summer he's and not, winter. He's not in this one. Well, she took a picture of him. No, he's no, not. In, he's, he's not, not in, in this. One. He's not. He's not competing. No, no they were just no, representing the. He's, yeah, yeah. He because of um, they had a, a um, natural disaster in his country. Uh, yep. um, okay. A volcano had had erupted, and it just um, he, he had spent so much time in the recovery and helping and. Doing what he can, he just didn't have time to train. But he came over so to participate in the yeah. ceremonies. Just, yeah. That's pretty cool, though. I mean, you got one <laughs> one guy for one country. Yeah. You know, U.S. usually sends about 300 representatives. Yeah, what? Um, so I, I love the Olympics. I'm hoping to see the Jamaicans. Hopefully they do well, at least compete well. Uh, With the bobsled, there, there's a single, I don't know the exact term, but the women have their single sleds now. Monobob. 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 Yeah. Mono yeah, bob. Mono I like bob. when she bobs. Yeah, I, yep. yep. They got a mono bob. They got the two man. They got the four man. So I think they got. I think they the Jamaicans got a four man sled in. They got two two mans in the mono bob. And the mono yeah. bob, right? So is that something new for this? That's this new. Olympics. The mono it's new. Bob? for the women, right? I, I, I or all the way around. I for the women. I'm not sure as far as when that became a, an actual event. This year. I, this year. Yeah, it was this, this year. year. Monos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
They, yeah. they come up with new, and like I said, we brought this up. I watch the Olympics, summer and winter, and most of the time I never see those sports other than every four years. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. It's the only yeah. time I watch it. Well, you got, right. you got somebody steering. you got somebody braking, and then – the two, the two in the middle are just yeah. to help push if yeah. you're doing yeah. it four man. Right, and uh, and the weight, the weight, yep. yeah. the weight is 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 um, it's everything. Uh, is everything you right? Mean, I would around. love eventually to do a bobsled run. Let's go. I would yeah. love to go down on a bobsled run. No problem. I'll watch you too. I'll take pictures <laughs> <laughs> and drink a beer while I'm doing I'll it. I'll drink a beer with you. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just love it. So, how did you like Jamaica? Loved it. Loved it. First time there, and I, I don't know what took me so long to get down there, but I'm definitely going back. Stony Run going to make an expansion <laughs> location down to Jamaica, Mon? It's funny you say that because I did kind of ask a lot of questions about, you know, that. And Red Stripe, it's brewed in Kingston. Yes. Right. And a uh, guy was filling me in on a lot of things. Malt is really kind of hard to come by. So they're actually, I think it's the cassava flour. Uh, they're growing this cassava flour to hmm. extract the sugars for the beer. Huh. So Interesting. That's, that's where they're getting their fermentables from this cassava okay. flour. Wow. I did have a few red stripes while I was down there. There we go. So, there we go. Yeah, so. that's about all that was available. <laughs> it really wasn't a whole lot of, uh, you know, you, you get to miss your IPAs and your stouts. And you know. Did they have any regular American beers? Because when I went to the Dominican, they at least had the regular, like the Bud's. I, I didn't see any. Okay. I didn't ask for any. I was, you know, I thought, well, you know, when in Rome, I'll drink right. the red stripe. Well, that's, that's what I, when I went to the Dominican, you know, they, the concierge came up and he, you know, fill your room's fridge. And he's always putting in there was Budweiser. Thinking, hey, I'm an American. I'm going to drink Budweiser. Yeah. I'm like, dude, take that out. I don't drink that. <laughs> drink I, I said, what, give me your beer. Yeah. I want to drink your local beer. And what was it? I forget what it was. Presidente? It, it was up. It was Presidente. Mm. It was pretty good. I liked it. It wasn't yeah. bad. Yeah. Could go up there in my sixty-four ounce uh, mug. <laughs> Yella cerveza. <laughs> <laughs> Por favor. Por favor. <laughs> so yeah, it's there's a good time. I mean, I, I've never been to Jamaica, but uh, that I, was our first time. I tell you, it was yeah, it was great. Too short. Comes it's definitely again. too short. Ben, tell the story on Jamaica with you. Oh, way back in what year was that? 2011. That was my most unfit parent moment in my life. Oh, so hell, that was 2011. So it would have been out of all of seven. <laughs> Seventeen. No, this, takes the, this takes the cake. Right so, here. so you you go on the cruise ship and then you sign up for these uh, excursions. Excursions. Thank you. And so I was 17. My cousin was maybe 14 or 15, a few years behind me. And uh, you get off the ship and then you you meet up with a local and then they take you to the excursion. And then uh, there's always a, a, a tight, tight run schedule on these ships, so you got to be back at a certain time. And again, uh, we're relatively young to be alone in a foreign country yes. with me, yeah. with locals. And I guess pops must have been worrying about it when we didn't return. So, so <laughs> let me let me build this up a little yeah. bit better. Well, so go ahead. We, we literally know. rush off the off the boat to get to this excursion for Ben. And first time cruising, we just assumed it was like right there. So, you know, these people come and take Ben and, and my nephew away, and they're gone. Hours. Hours. <laughs> so we have a little place to sit down. We were so nervous. We didn't see the island. Uh, <laughs> we were just so nervous. And there's these people playing, uh, I forget, the, the dominoes. The, the dominoes, thank you. And Alan and my, my brother-in-law my brother -in -law and I, we started drinking, you know, rum. Oh boy, just, that's uh, a mistake there. <laughs> and and we're getting nervous, and 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 Cindy and then the girls are crying because you know where's our kids at? Mm, yeah. And wow. and we're pretty strict parents, and God, it was the scariest <laughs> seven hours. No, I wouldn't. We were having a blast, by the way. Yeah, everything was good. <laughs> they, come, they come back smiling. And I, well, here, here. Yeah. <laughs> when in when in Jamaica, drink rum. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, that was a, a moment I'll never forget. <laughs> ben probably won't either. We, we were having a blast. I think we went uh, zip lining and yeah. kayaking and wow. stuff, stuff awesome. like that. It was fun. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. yeah. that's pretty good. Since then, he's never been out of the basement. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, just tell us, Tim, about where, what your location is, what you guys do. Just, just remind everybody where they can find you. 
3605 East Market Street. Yeah. It's, uh, and we've been there since 2018. We opened in September of 2018, so we're going on four years. And we just enjoy making beer, uh, making food, you know, making people happy. And it's all about, our motto is, uh, Enter as strangers, leave as friends. Oh, that's a nice. great motto. There that's you go. a great that, motto. That's so yeah, true. Just try to, you know. So are you the brewer or do you have a, a brewer helper? I did the, most of the brewing early on uh, for the past, uh, it's probably going on a year now. I've had an assistant, Colton Boyles. Okay. And he's been doing a fantastic job. He's just really into it, helps out in the kitchen, you know, helps out brewing. So him and I will sit down and you know collaborate on a beer and you know we just did a uh, a New England IPA. It's I would say it's more of a uh, not really a New England because the, the color didn't come out as as good. What you as wanted, kind of like my Kolsch. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. It was a, it had more of a uh, and we added a lot of vanilla to it. So I'm thinking maybe the, the vanilla beans might have tainted it a little bit. Uh, taint's probably not the, the bad word. That's what we're using. <laughs> darkened it a little bit so but it's good the flavor's great i mean i'm happy with the flavor but yeah colton's been he's been doing most of the brewing here in the for the last several months and uh that's cool been, been busy with bailey's and you know doing other management stuff so it, when you're expanding are you take are you taking some of the home brew supplies area or are you moving expanding on a building overall uh, we uh we actually took some of the homebrew shops area okay but it worked out great because we put up a wall and on that wall I'll be able to put shelving that absorbs everything that we had to remove from the shelves okay. in there so we it was kind of the best of both worlds we got we picked up 24 more seats and I'll still have plenty of space inside the yeah. side to, to to merchandise that's cool so, yeah. so I got, you know, I got a question too yeah, go ahead yeah. so earlier when you were talking about the the collusion drink you mentioned the complexity there and all the different flavors and stuff and then just now you mentioned your New England kind of the color was a bit off. Mm -hmm. So forgive me if this is silly, but explain to me how that recipe process works and how you ramp it up and then brew it. And then at what point, so is there like a smaller sample brewing going on? At, at what point do you, do you <clears throat> deem that good for, for sale, you know? Well, and that's a good point. Uh, we don't have a pilot system. So we rely heavily on our past experience gotcha. with different malts and uh, hops and you know what we've gotten from what we've used. So Beersmith is uh, the software that we use. Okay. So you can, that's wow. pr pretty good software. Oh, there's software out there. You just, you come up with an idea and throw it in and it Yeah, so you get, you know, first of all, you get your style and then you dial that in on Beersmith and then you, you add your ingredients and there's actually a scale uh, it's red and green. So uh, when as you start entering the ingredients, you'll see that scale start coming into the middle, and then you know you want to keep it into the green area. Gotcha. So on all your all your aspects, you know your ABV, your uh, <clears throat> color, your IBUs, all that is part of that software. So it, it dials it in. So That's but cool. there, you know, a lot of times you know uh, malts consistency and you know when you add a few things since we don't do a pilot brew uh you know sometimes you know we just don't get it right gotcha wow that's a lot of beer to throw out if you don't get it right right, right. yeah I, I i'll be perfectly honest with you that it's uh the latest one we did great taste great aroma but it just you know the, the haziness is there but it was more it's more of a reddish you know and instead of that nice straw Straw uh, color. Light color you have on your New England IPAs. And, so, and, and people pick up on that. You know, they if expect yeah. to see that, uh, right. that, that color, and if it's not there, they're like, well, it's not a New England IPA. Right. That's, that's kind of where we started this. We're like, to, you know, we're giving you our, our opinions, but we're amateurs at this. We're not the, the holy Moses of grails as far as don't take what we say because what we definitely don't have that. We're not a, what do they call that, a small yay or whatever. We, ha we don't have that kind of palate or knowledge, so we're just going with what we feel. Yeah, but and that, and really, that's that's what it's all about. I mean, you know, you, you get the, it's like a blank canvas. Yeah. You, know, you get to paint what you want, what you like on that canvas. Right. So, and, and the most rewarding thing is when you have a concept in your head of what you, what flavor profiles you want to get out of that, and then when you hit it 
spot on. Uh, you know, yeah. What you were thinking is what you're Paddle. tasting. It's like pat on the back. Yeah, well, it's, there you it, go. You know, it's you self satisfaction. Have, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and, and that's what it's all about. It you 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 still want to have that satisfaction. You yep. know, it's it's not you, you know you don't want to go make it feel like you're going to a job that you hate. You know, we we have a lot of fun with it, and that's yeah. kind of like with us the kits. That's you know, awesome. that that first kit we did that stout that mm-hmm. we got out there at Bailey's. Um, we didn't know what we were doing. We could, I couldn't wait for that two weeks in the bottle to actually crack it and see what it tasted like. <laughs> mm-hmm. And like you just said, it, when it tasted good, I was like, holy shit, I can do this. <laughs> yeah. It was fun. Yeah. We have a great time. We do. Yeah. yeah. Hey, if you ever run across a batch that you don't uh, think <laughs> is ready for the public, you can give me a call, all right? <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> so I, I think we have another beer. I'm getting a little parched with oh, all yeah, this yeah, beer yeah. talk. <clears throat> So what do we got there, Kevin? So for our third tasting, we have an Appalachian Brewing Company uh, out of Harrisburg, the Mountain Lager, uh, the Dormunder. Um, they've got it at a 5.3 ABV, um, 24 IBU, and um, it, it looks pretty nice here. It's pretty light. Yeah, very light. Probably, mm-hmm. now that's where I'd go maybe a two-ish on our, on our chart. Maybe a little bit. That's it. That's yeah, right. Maybe even a one, one, two. Yeah. This is the beer I tried to drink earlier, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's got a. It's got a f- interesting aroma. Yeah. It, what interesting. Is that? And I'm, mm-hmm. I can, I'm trying to place the aroma. Yeah. So, so Demunder uh, export style Demunder. of beer was developed in, in <laughs> Westfalen, Germany, and is a classic light lager with a great character. This style boasts a light golden blonde color and exhibits a moderate hop pale ale. The finish is rich yellow, um, yet mellow. Our brewers have developed this beer as a tribute to the Appalachian Mountains where we lived and play. I can't place the aroma, but actually, it, it's not bad. It's, yeah, it's, it's it, def- a, it has sure a, that's a hop aroma. Of some, yeah. Yes. It doesn't really say yes. what, what, what hops, hops they use. Yeah. But it does, it's, it's mellow on the mouthfeel. It's not bad. Yeah, you got about 12,375 check ins with untapped. Oh, that's it? Only about, yeah. And uh, they're rating it a 3.33. Well, I'm in that 325 range, I think, is where I'm at. I'm Again, gonna... I'm not much for light beers, but it's actually, it's not hateful. No. You, know, you know this, the, the aroma. I can't yeah, place it. I'm, well, you know what it reminds me of? And I'm going to swear at you. It reminds me of a Heineken. Oh, boy. Mm. Thank you. Not that is it. That was what that was what I was thinking of. <laughs> yes, yeah, very much. Reminds you of a Heineken. A Heineken. Yes. Yeah, it's definitely that, a hop. A hop uh, yeah. So you're saying it smells like a Heine. <laughs> I'd look her Heine. I mean. Oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> that's it. Thank you, Dave. I couldn't put. No problem. Put that is. That's, that's a good. I'm, I'm actually, that's not bad. I mean, it's not hateful. I'm like a 3325. No, it's, it does have a mellow mouth feel. Yep. And I think that might be some of the malts that were that Bavarian style. Crystal clear. It is crystal yeah, clear. Awesome. It's definitely, there's no haze at all. So it's not bad. It's good. It sticks to your palate, too, for a while, and, it, and, yeah. it's, and it's, it's nice. Like I said, I'm like a 325. It's good. Yeah, and that hop aroma. Yeah. Just trying to place that into aroma. The, yeah. Into the flavor as well. Yeah, I'm just trying to place that aroma. It's, it's not overbearing. It's, no, not, yeah. not at all. Not at all. Not hateful. Very light. I could drink that in the summertime. <laughs> Maybe mm-hmm. one. Then I'll go after the harder, <coughs> the harder stuff. <laughs> so that's that's where you, what are you guys thinking? That's about right. I, I mean, it seems like a, a nice light beer that you could have a few of in the summertime for sure. Definitely uh, it wouldn't be my first choice or second maybe. But you going after a Coors Light? <laughs> or I mean, oh no, I wait, no, wait, no wait, Bush. Bush. If I have to drink a light beer, that's you know mass produced Bush. <clears throat> but oh, I'm choosing that over Bush. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know, man. You guys got me on this kick the past months, past few months. I haven't touched a bush light on my, my garage fridge. is pretty full with a light beer. I'm, hmm. You guys, you know, Dave asked that age question earlier about yeah. how long is a beer good for it. Beers don't. I go to get a mix of six, and they don't last very long in my house. So No. <laughs> they're, they're, not, they're not out there long enough no. <laughs> to reach no. that age. There you Sa- go. Sally's asked me, she goes, can you do without a beer every night? I could, but I could. I'm not. 
She goes, yeah. you become an alcoholic? I said, no. I just like, I need to check it in. It's all about choices. I might get a badge. Yeah, it's, <laughs> you, need, you need to get a badge. I need to get another badge. I maxed out one of my badges the other day, Brett. You did probably you? did too. I think it was the, the Verified Adventurer one. Yes. Okay. On level 100. You guys are probably already there, but I just wanted to. I don't know. Maybe I'm, I'm not. I don't know if I did yet. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean, Brad. But Caitlin says the same thing about it. you need a beer every night, and it's not even about you know, it's not even about getting the buzz or whatever. It's yeah. about trying something new. Exactly. From try every, something, I, yeah. I just enjoy trying something. Exactly. New. I exactly. couldn't tell you the last time I, I went and bought the same thing over and mm-hmm. over again. You yeah, know? we've we've had this discussion too many a times. Most Sam Adams, Yingling, yeah. and stuff were usually our go tos, but mm-hmm. since we started this path, nothing. We're not doing them anymore. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. and I, and I've. We we've Dave said and and I know Kevin doesn't like IPAs. And a year and a half ago, we brought this up the last episode. That if you would have put an IPA in front of me, I never would have drank it. Now our palates have all changed. We're at least yeah. trying them. Right. Yeah, I, I I don't know if I can even say I don't like it anymore. No, There's, I think we've come to an appreciation sours. of all the beer styles. Is where this is this whole path is, and we're meeting great people like Tim. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Thank you, absolutely. You know. We've talked to several other people. We've done the the, the when it was called York County Out Trail. Now it's the Brewery Tours. We Kevin and I did that, and, yeah. and that's a fun time and interesting. Got a nice cup up there on the mantle. Yeah, yep. got Stony <laughs> runs up there behind you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So hey, but we we brought up many times about that breweries in PA site. Yep. So and you said it's you found a lot of interesting stuff on there. Oh yeah. But there's an event coming up in April. We may have to check it out. Philly is taking over Pittsburgh. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> April 23rd at Necromancer Brewing, uh, there's a bunch of breweries from Philly area that are coming over to Necromancer in Pittsburgh. Nice. Warwick Farm, Human Robot, Levant, yep. Forest in Maine, Second Sin, Hidden River, Stable 12, 10 7, Rebel Hill, Four Score from Gettysburg. Lost Tavern, and then there's a supposedly a mystery guest. I think it's like $55. They're having two sessions. They're having a morning session and an afternoon session. I think that would be a cool event. Maybe York ought to do something like that. I think, Tim, maybe you could head that up and get that started <laughs> on it. <laughs> well, we'll see how this goes first. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I think Cause right away I thought – Philly and Pittsburgh. That just that just doesn't seem like a good thing. Yeah. So apparently this beer is involved. Yeah, apparently this has been a thing, but they, they they weren't able to do it a year or two ago because of COVID. Uh, so they're going to try and restart it back up. So apparently this has been a thing where one invades the other city. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it's cool. We brought that up the one, the, you know, the, the Shy Bear was doing that sour or sour thing. You yeah. Know, that, that's kind of where our last episode came from. Yeah. They're bringing a bunch of breweries up there to do sours and, and tastings. So I, I, that's the stuff that we were talking about, the collabs. And mm-hmm. I think that's where this craft industry is just phenomenal. It's like you said, you, you get to know these people. And you being an your independent business owner, you're going to get to know them. And you, you, it, you said it. If I need something, hey, they're more than willing to help me out and, and vice versa. Right. Not many industries can say that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's really cool, though, because on the outside looking in, you might think there's, like, some competitive thing going on. And, and, hey, there might be. But just hearing Tim talk about the ingredients and then seeing these tap takeovers happen across the state, it's really cool. Yeah, we were up at the industry. Big Bottom up there. And, yeah, and yeah, I was just about to ask you about that. The tap takeover. Um, basically, what, what that was is the owner of Big Bottom went out and went to their different breweries to bring their beer to mm-hmm. his f- establishment to promote them. I thought that was cool. I went up there uh, the night before because they advertised it from six to eight. It was packed, so my wife and I went over about eight about eight o'clock. And they said, "Well, that's tomorrow." So, well, no, it's advertised tonight. No, no, the full takeover is tomorrow. So I missed the whole event. But, oh wow! Um, I did get to sample a couple of different from Rotunda. I think we, Rotunda was the one they had on that night, but which we had on our last episode. Yep. So I think it's just cool. I think yeah. you know this this whole craft beer stuff is just phenomenal. Yeah. And, and it makes you think what, uh, sooner or later is it going to get saturated? You know, but it, yeah. it just seems like you know, there's I don't, more and more interest. Just like what you guys were saying, you know, you're just starting to get into this. Just think of all the the market share that uh, Budweiser and Coors Light would, and Miller yeah. Light still have. The people that haven't had the pleasure of 
getting into this and, and develop developing a taste for other people. it is it's definitely a power so there's definitely a, still a market there yeah and, you know it's it still has a a, a ceiling you don't you know. mind spending five or ten dollars a beer if it's good mm -hmm. if it's good yeah you know in uh again opening up your palate going from a sour on our last episodes and uh you know i never thought i'd be drinking that and you know now to today it's just wonderful there's me. there's times it's like you know it's like i'm not not one for something real heavy so I mean, yeah i'm gonna look for either an ipa or a sour or something a little bit lighter on the lighter side like one of the lagers that we're talking about um so ben where can they find us again they need at, to like us they need to follow us as she shares yeah at central pa poor on uh, facebook twitter instagram and youtube subscribe to our youtube channel please you got to hit that subscribe button hit that little bell it tells you when we got a new upload up there hey we're getting there I we're mean, getting there. We're getting there. I mean, this is what five. This, this will be episode five. Episode, five. episode yeah. five, and I, I'm having a great time. I know about yeah. you guys. This yeah. is good yeah. stuff. We appreciate any likes, shares, comments on social media. Uh, that'll be the way that we grow this thing even larger. But hey, we're drinking beer, getting together, having a good time. We've Either come way. a long way since <laughs> our first episode. Oh yeah, for oh, yeah. sure. So um, I give you guys a lot of credit. You know, you're. Like you said, doing what you like to do, drinking beers, and just having a good time. We're, we're glad you joined us, Tim. Yeah, uh, thank you, Tim. So they can find you on East Market Street. How can they find you on the Internet? Yes, uh, stonyrunbrewhouse.com and, and through all the social, social media medias. platforms. Yeah, okay. So. Got to get out there and try the Belgian quad. I mean, that is just phenomenal beer. But Tim, they, they supplies they... last. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he won't fill the growler up for you. <laughs> well, we actually did start doing growler fills now. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. So, yeah. So, make sure you Back go out there. Back by popular and, demand. Back by popular demand. Yeah. So, you got to go out and visit Stony Run. they got good food. they got good beer. And if you're interested in making your own beer, Tim and his staff will help you that way, yeah. too. So, Come see that's, how I got, that's how we got started. And that's why we're sitting here in front of you because Brett had a stupid idea about starting a podcast about our beer drinking nights. So here we are. Um, so any last minute thoughts, guys? No, I just wanted to do a shout out. That's I guess it was last weekend. We went to Central New York, our hometown, and did a wine tour. But uh, a lot of new craft um, places popping up there as well. And one of my f favorites, and I'm always going to mess up the name, Fleur de Lis. Fleur de Lis. Fleur de Lis. And, um, you know, it's just like your place, Tim, they treat you like home. You go in there, and an array of choices, um, very, you know, mellow place, and uh, always a good time. Many more to choose from there as well. You were on the drunk bus, though, right? We were on a drunk bus. <laughs> and, um, but it was nice because I'm not a wine drinker. I started out as a whiskey drinker. And um, you know what? I don't care too much for a lot of the the vodkas and things that they're making in that area. So um, we stopped off. Actually, Ben and I a couple of trips to, to Central New York ago. Um, very small uh, distillery, yep, not, there not you right go. downtown. Um, so it's growing in all areas. Yeah, so that's why we kind of stuck with just the pour, even though we're focusing mainly on the beer side. Yeah. But eventually, we could do this for the wineries. The cideries, the meads, uh, the distilleries. So mm -hmm. we got we got our options. Twenty two's got a ceiling we can't hit. I'm hoping we can grow this. That's for sure. That's hey, if you have a recommendation for us, let us know. Central PA Poor Gmail dot com. Yeah. At Central PA Poor on all the social media. We'll be happy to incorporate your uh, your suggestions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and don't forget Dave's trivia question. My trivia question. We 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 have these gift cards we want to give away, so you got you gotta let us know. So it was what Olympic event has the United States team have never medaled in, winter or summer? Right. Let Any, us know your answer. I don't have a clue. Any color. Of Any no medals. Gold. Go, no, no medals. Gold, silver. I have medals. an idea, but I'll keep my. I do too. Yeah, I do too, but I'm going to keep it to myself. <laughs> yeah. until, 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 we're <laughs> until we're done. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll find out what your answers are because they're all wrong. Yeah. They're all wrong. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh he's confident, <laughs> isn't he? <laughs> Typically, Dave will dig right in it. There's so always, yeah. Well, you got to, you got to think. There's, a, it's definitely a trick question of some sort, like the yeah. last few. So, it ain't figure skating. <laughs> I knew that. Ooh. It's not figure skating. <laughs> no, it's not figure skating. <laughs> no. 
So, hey, uh, we appreciate you guys. Look us up on our social media. Give us an email at centralpapoor at gmail. Don't forget to go visit Tim and his staff at Stony Run and Bailey's. So we hope you guys had a good time, and we're going to end here with our cheers beer. And Tim was kind enough to bring one of his, so I'm going to let him describe his beer that we're going to cheers you out with. Yes. This is our High Point Pilsner. High Point Pilsner. It's a Bohemian Czech Pilsner, and we used all Czech uh, Pilsen malt and a little bit of Carapils, Munich Light, and we used Saz Hops. So, so if I'd want to make this in a kit, I could come to you and get a kit. Uh, we could maybe work, we could work something out. <laughs> yes, well, sounds, hopefully you like it first. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Or just from listening to it. Yeah. So is this is this one is this a new style for you, or is this something you've brewed before? We've brewed it before. This is probably our third batch. Okay. And it's sold really well. Okay. So we just it's, it's, it's one of those that's continuing to stay on the tap. So it's got to continue. It's got a good yeah. following. It's got a good color. It's clean. Clean. Yeah. Yeah. Got a good flavor. Yeah. Cheers. So if you want to find out more about Stony Run and their beer um, and how we follow, how we do this in Untapped, we will give you our rating on this. So give us a follow on Untapped as well. Um, gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. Tim, thank you very much yeah, for joining you, us here I, on the Central PA. I'd just like to say, since we're cheersing, I yes. would like to cheers to my – the staff at Stony oh. Run. Oh yeah, oh very good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. If it wasn't for the, we have great people. You know, we've been blessed with really good people, and if it wasn't for them, you know, that, that's that's who we are. There's and something else we're going to cheers to. You have an anniversary coming up. In May, yeah. yeah. Oh, thirty <laughs> some years, right? Forty five. Forty five years. 45. So we definitely have wow. something to cheers for. So yeah. grab a beer, pick one up, cheers with us. Let's join the CPP crew and Tim. And let's all be bonded by beer. Bonded by uh, beer. Cheers. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.